we often represent a position in our 3D space, usually with components of x, y, z axis. But in another way, we can figure out the same position with other three parameters. First, draw a line from the center to the position. This length is gonna be one of them. The length is often represented with Greek letter rho. Next, I define this angle between the line and the z-axis. I call it phi. This is the second parameter. And after that, if we draw a vertical line from the position to xy plane, the length is gonna be rho cosine phi. Cause you know, in Sokatoa, adjacent is defined as hypotenuse times cosine of the angle. Uh, this time, the vertical line is the adjacent and the low is the hypotenuse. On the other hand, if we join from the center to this point, the length is gonna be low sine phi because this line is opposite of the low. Then if I project this line on x and y axis and define this angle as theta, which is third parameter, we figure out those two lengths. Following the Sokatoa, this length is gonna be cosine of the line cosine of this line, which is rho sine phi cosine theta, and here to be rho sine phi sine theta. Alright? <laughs> Are you stick with me? So from this diagram, we can get xyz components of Cartesian. The length of this vertical line is z value, right? And this length is gonna be y, and here to be x value. So by plotting a lots of lots of vertices while changing those two angles once a bit, but with same radius, we eventually see a sphere shape. However, in programming environment, uh, at least in p5.js, the three axis is usually flipped like this. So um, same logic, but the formula, actually this x and z value is flipped like this. Okay, so now we're gonna play on spherical coordinate with these flipped three formulas. First, I set the angle mode to degrees to make it easy to understand. Next, set the color mode to HSB for convenience later. And set the stroke and background to my favorite cars. Okay, so let's write the formula. Okay, uh, I just made a two-dimensional for loop to go through the two angles, the theta and the phi. Then I draw a point. Oh, I just forgot. Okay, I draw a point here at every five degrees of two angles. Okay, um, this, and then set the radius to 200 for now. Okay, let's run it. <laughs> That's beautiful, right? So we already implemented a spherical coordinate in P5. What an easy thing, isn't it? Now I'm drawing the points with this point function, but actually there's a better way. That's this function, vertex. If I sandwich this with in shape and n shape this sort of function and set the drawing mode to points yeah it looks exactly the same but actually it's computationally lighter than the point function and furthermore if I set like lines Lines more than here. It looks like so. Oh, but actually, I need to switch to close mode to connect the beginning, to connect the beginning and the end. Okay. I actually add some rotation.
I guess this looks good. All right, here we go. I want to make sliders to change some values dynamically. So firstly, let's make this density value interactive. I just made two variables to store the sliders and displaying the text. Yeah, uh, displaying the value by text through HTML element. Well, actually, uh, p5.js has pre made functions to create those elements. First, um, this is for creating div element. Div is kind of blank container to fill it with something, in this case, text. Um, next, this function is to create a slider which requires four parameters. First two, this and this, is a minimum and maximum value of the slider. And third one is the default value. I set it for now 24. And last one is step size. I set it one. Okay. And at here, I divided. Uh, 180 and 360 by um, the density value so the value is bigger this one angle step will be smaller which means become more dense do you make sense and lastly I map the slider value a bit and like this and display with this function okay let's reload it Yeah, that looks fun, right? I also make sliders for the theta and phi maximum values. That looks good. Phi goes here to here, 190 degrees. And on the other hand, theta go around uh, the circle, 360 degrees. Like this. For people who are first time to touch figure coordinate with this interactiveness, it's much easier to make sense, right? I'm gonna show you another way to draw sphere. So let's separate this um, sphere drawing part into a function. Okay, I just made one loop, only one loop for theta, then replace those phi with theta, and set the density uh, value very small. And here, we actually need only maximum 180 degrees of theta here, so we divided this by 2. Alright, let's run it. Oh, a strange shape here. I actually multiplied this theta value by arbitrary number like 2 um, 4 8 yep 11 okay uh, this is what we want a sphere showing up again but it's spiral By the way, I want to set this frequency value to the, the density slider. Hmm. 
It's fun to watch. By the way, let me work on some CSS to make that looking better. Well, I actually gonna copy from my another random project file and paste here. Hmm? Okay, um, this top one is for the background of the HTML page. And second one is for the text here. The third one is for the slider and this one is slider handle. This handle, right? Hmm? Then I set the class of the sliders like so. Yeah, I love it. It kind of looks gorgeous. Well, it's totally optional and not necessary, but if you want to change the looking, for one example, you can write like this. Go back to sphere. So we've made uh, two types of basic sphere so far. And from now is exciting part. We're gonna make some very exciting stuff with using those two. You ready? So for the first one, I use this spiral one. I name it like um, Lizard 3D. <laughs> Do you get that? And uh, I actually set this value to 360 for now. Hmm? And next, I multiply those three theta by arbitrary value. Like for now, I set it like 6. Then multiply these two theta with another value. For now I set 5, ok, and yeah, let's see what happened. Boom! <laughs> yeah, that's it! Ah, that's... Have you ever seen a, such a beautiful sphere like this before? Hmm? If you haven't, then you must into deep and explore around that a little bit, right? So I tweak this value a little bit. A little bit complicated, but still beautiful. I want to see if I take those parameters with sliders, what it looks like. I made two sliders for each side of the values. So reload. This is actually 3D version of Lisage Curve on Polar Coordinate. Lisage Curve is a set of mathematical patterns that appear when we multiply the frequency of trigonometry in Polar Coordinate equation by certain values. It's very visually interesting when you tweak around those parameters, just like this. So, for people who haven't heard of that, I will link some videos explaining that in the description. Ah, it's actually called like a uh, spherical research curve. So, it's close to the end, but before in this video, I'm gonna show you one more fun thing by playing with spherical coordinate. This time, I copy from the normal sphere. Then I name it like Bumpy Sphere. Now I set the drawing mode to points. And this is the important part. I multiply the frequency for now by um, 
arbitrary value like 6 and 5 okay let's run it yeah it's so bumpy <laughs> that's too fun to watch well at this formula um, at a glance you might feel it's intimidating it feels like we have a spherical coordinate in one of the terms in another spherical coordinate right very complex but don't worry we can figure out what each term does by changing the values right so let's change those frequencies first this side and see what happens more complex Hmm, I get it. Just found out this frequency is corresponding to the vertical component of this bump. Because when I set 1 to the frequency like this, this figure is completely rolling vertically, right? You see that? But if I set like 2, now there's one undulation shows up here. One undulation here. When I set 3, then we have 2 of them, 1, 2, right? Okay, so what about this left side? Well, as you guys guess, hmm. Well, as you guys guess, it's corresponding to the horizontal component of the bump, right? This number of the undulation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is corresponding to this integer, right? Yeah, uh, interesting. That's of course, if it doesn't have any undulation, then we have a normal sphere. So, after that, how those two terms are playing here? Let's find out. Ah, I see. Okay, this term is responsible for the radius, along with this r, which is for now 200. Whereas this term is responsible for amount of bumpiness, this bumpiness here. Those trigonometries always return a value between 0 to 1. So without the two terms, the sphere gonna be like this. The whole term inside this curly bracket, the range is gonna be 0 to 1 too. Which means the possible range of the whole radius is gonna be 0 to 200. 0 to 200. So we add up 1 here to make the radius bigger. Which this moment, uh, 200 to 400. Then multiply by 0.x value to make the amplitude of the sine wave smaller that causes the bumpiness become gentle. By the way, I feel like, as some of you might guess, this is like a 3D version of polar laws in polar coordinates. And polar laws is another pattern that appear when we assign some trigonometry at radius of polar coordinate equation. So, Let's check it out. Let's flatten the particular axis for now, then remove those two terms. Yep, this exactly looks like polar rows now.
Now I'm pretty much sure about that this bumpy sphere is 3D version of the polar rose. At the end of this video, I'll show you some madness of trigonometry. It's very fun and you can try out yourself. Alright, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope you got some new ideas or inspiration from here. I live in Japan, it's quite late, so I'm gonna go sleep. Good night. <laughs>